What's up, Cal Gang? Welcome back to Static. So we're coming back with 2-3-5. So I just taught the previous poem, so check that out if you haven't seen it yet. But if we're trying to find the magnitude of the resultant force of these two vectors and see its direction counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. So I've done a bunch of these problems on this channel, but let's go ahead and solve this one. So if we're trying to find the magnitude force resultant, what is that? Well, the resultant force is equal to the sum of the vectors that is being added to it. So of course, it's just going to be force 1 plus force 2. So basically, we want to break these vectors down. Right, we're given these two forces, right? But we can't just simply add 50 to 40 because they're pulling in opposite directions. They have different angles, right? So we can't just say that it's 90 pounds or whatever. So we need to break this down into Cartesian vectors. So that's what we're going to do first. So let's go ahead and write these as Cartesian vectors. So what is force 1? Right, so I've showed a couple easy ways. Check out some of my other videos, uh, some previous videos for easier ways to do this. But we know that when it says that our magnitude, our force 1, is equal to 40 pounds, that's our hypotenuse. And we can think about that as its own little triangle. Right, so here's a right angle triangle. And this is force 1y, and this is force 1x. So if we were trying to find force 1x, we're trying to find this one here. So we're going to take the hypotenuse, 40 pounds, and we're going to attach it to what we need to. So we're looking at the opposite here, right? It's a, the angle, it's the sign on the opposite side of the angle. So we're going to attach a sine of 30. And this is our i component. Now if we want to find the j component, the y component, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add 40, the hypotenuse, but this time the y component here is adjacent to 30 degrees. So if it's adjacent, we use cosine sine of 30 degrees j. And what this gives you is 20i plus 34.6j. So that's our force 1. So let's do force 2 now. Similar thing. Right, so force 2, let's break it down into its triangle. So it's going to look something like this. And here's our right angle. So we're looking at the x component first. Our x component is adjacent to the 20 this time. So instead of doing a sine on the x, we're going to do 50 cosine of 20, because cosine is what we use when it's adjacent to the angle. We're going to attach our i to that. Then, well, let's do our y component. Well, this time our y component is in the negative direction, right? This vector is in quadrant 4, which means that our y component is going to be the negative part. So we need to subtract 50. And then we're going to use a similar thing, right? It's opposite, so we're going to use sine. 50 is sine of 20. J. Now we're going to solve for this. Is equal to 47.0i minus 17. My one J. Uh, these are in pounds. I forgot to write that. So now, if we want to find the resultant force, right, where you just had the vectors together, like I put up there. So force resultant, it's going to be equal to force one. So it's going to be 20i plus 34.6j. You're going to add to force two. So this is plus 47i minus 17.1j. And so when we're going to have the vectors together, we're going to have the i components and the j components. So the i components, 20 plus 47, is equal to 67 i. And then 34.6 minus 17.1 is 17.5 j. So then if we want to find the magnitude of this, right? when we're finding magnitude, we're going to take the square root of the x component squared, so 67 squared plus 17.5 squared. All right, this is a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. This is just finding the magnitude of the hypotenuse. All right, and then we solve this and you get 69.2 pounds is the magnitude of this sector. Cool. So now we just want to find the direction counterclockwise from positive x-axis. So I'm going to get rid of a little bit of this here. Yeah, I don't need that. I'll put not. Okay, so let's, it's something that's nice to draw our resultant uh, vector. All right, so here's our resultant vector. It's 67i plus 17.5j. So that means that its base is 67, and its height is 17.5. So this is kind of the vector that we're looking at here. This is the first resultant, and this is our theta. So this is the theta we're solving for because it's counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. 
And so here's our positive x-axis, same as here. We're going counterclockwise, which is this direction, from that. So that's why it's, this is the data that we're looking for. And again, we find force results by doing a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So let's go ahead and find it. So we're doing tangents, right? Should we do tangent? We could do it sine, cosine, or tangent. I like to do tangent to find this. So I'm going to say tangent of theta. Well, we're finding this theta, so it's going to be opposite over adjacent. So we're going to do opposite 17.5 over adjacent 67. Then we're going to take inverse tangent to get theta is equal to inverse tangent of 17.5 over 67. And then just doing that, you get that it is. I cannot read my handwriting once again. I think that is 14.7 degrees. All right. Now let's say you solve this problem, right? We found the force resultant and the theta. So if you got lost anywhere, check out some of my previous videos where I go a little slower and explain these uh, steps in more detail. Uh, but yeah, I hope this helped you guys. Uh, check out my statics playlist for more problems from the same book. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.